Hey there. So uh, some of y'all may remember uh, a couple tech blogs ago, I was playing around with these, which are toroidal flowers. That is um, examples of poi constantly plane bending, but always doing so in a plane that is perpendicular to the plane that the hand is moving in. And it looks quite a bit like uh, normal flowers, except for the fact that it presents a view in 3D that we don't normally get out of flowers. Um, I've had a number of interesting conversations with some folks about these flowers, and uh, really interesting pictures starting to emerge for me that I'm trying to figure out if it's me messing up on my geometry, or whether it is an honest-to-God property that happens when you introduce plane bending into the equation, but I'm having a hard time finding a distinction between in-spin and anti-spin flowers with, uh, uh, with, these, uh, with these type of toroidal flowers. Um, let me show you why. So, um, Charlie, uh, a little while ago, talked me through a really interesting demo that I hadn't thought of uh, performing with these, which is to do them in floor plane, and starting off with essentially a buzz saw. From here, we move in quarter turns, and we make our, our point of reference either when the poi is pointed furthest away from us or when it's pointed closest to us. For this way, we go one, two, three, four petals. Um, if it's closest to us, it looks more like one, two, three, four petals, right? Now, the interesting thing about this is I can't tell the difference between the two of these, um, aside from the phasing of them. When we play around with anti-spin flowers, we're used to having the uh, ha having a property wherein the number of petals you're doing results in uh, one fewer the number of downbeats. That is, if I'm doing four petals in anti-spin, I am doing three downbeats. One, two, three. One, two, three. Like that. Versus in-spin, where it's an extra downbeat. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So if X is the number of petals uh, and Y is the number of downbeats, then anti-spin follows a very uh, nice, neat uh, X minus 1 equals Y, and um, in spin is X plus 1 equals Y. Um, but when attempting these toroidal flowers, X appears to equal Y. See if you can follow me here. We do 1, 2, 3, four downbeats. Even if we wait until they're closest, it's one, two, three, four downbeats. Why this is important is that the number of downbeats also determines the number of complete circles that the poi head is making. If in inspin, a poi head is going x plus one uh, uh, beats, and in antispin it's going x minus one beats, then the total distance traveled by the poi head as it's going around the full cycle of the flower is going to be vastly longer for the in-spin flower than it is for the anti-spin flower. If, as I suspect with toroidal flowers, x equals y, it means that no matter how we orient um, the direction of the poi in relation to our hand, x is always going to equal y, and the distance traveled by the poi head is always going to be exactly the same. Um, we could try, uh, thus far you, uh, you'll notice that whenever I make these turns, the orientation of uh, the plane of the poi deforms slightly diagonally, which I'm all about because I can't wait to combine these with diagonal planes. Uh, but you'll notice that right there, whether I'm waiting for it to go out in which case the orientation deforms towards my left shoulder, versus whether I'm waiting for it to come in, in which case it deforms towards my right shoulder. I'm doing the same number of downbeats, and therefore I'm pretty sure the poi head is traveling the exact same distance. It's even true if I were to say reverse the uh, direction of the buzz saw, such that it's going reverse rather than forwards, and once again, uh, make the turn when it's on the outside.
versus the inside. Once again, same number of downbeats, deforms the plane slightly, and I'm pretty sure the same distance covered, right? Um, the conclusion that this is bringing me to is that there's only a superficial difference between in-spin and anti-spin with toroidal flowers, uh, and that basically there really is no difference, that the two are just really either a difference in the threading of the screw that the poi head follows, or in the phasing of the flower, such that you're counting whether it's when it's pointed out or pointed in. Um, and, you know, we can, say, combine two poi together, if, say, we want to play in buzzsaw, and once again, each poi head is going to get in four downbeats. If we go into opposites, where we know for a fact that the orientation of the threads is going to be at opposites. And we can verify this when we come back to home base and find that the uh, angle of the uh, planes are right angles to each other. Still, they're doing the same number of downbeats, right? So, my challenge to you, my viewers, is to come up with a Prove to me that anti-spin versus in-spin exists for toroidal flowers. Charlie, I know you're really convinced on this, and I can't wait for you to make a case and eat crow on it, but I need to see it done. Just I'm, 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 I'm not seeing the difference between the two of them. So, um, please leave me comments, make response videos, etc. Um, show me that I'm messing up my math on this one. And, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't wait to see that done, so I know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, yeah, in the meantime, thank you all for watching. Uh, you learned something, God only knows I am. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon. Thanks for watching, and peace.